Evening all, how's it going? Uh, I'm just going to do some riffing today because I think we've been a bit miserable and glum of late. First of all, this meme made me fucking howl laughing. I was loving it. <laughs> Son, it's 8am and time for your behave in school drugs. <laughs> yes, mommy. He looks like fucking E.T. with a beanie on. <laughs> Fucked up kid. And uh, it made me think, you know, just how medicated are kids in America these days? When I was in school... We didn't believe in such things. I can hand on heart categorically state that when I was in fucking primary school, there is no way... I don't think anyone in the entire school would have been ripped to the tits on fucking wobbly eggs <laughs> to, to get the fucking sums done. I think it's completely ridiculous. But um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe there was one or two, but it would have been rare as rocking our shit. There is no way that is, it is a, that was a thing in the 80s. And um, it's just... Yet another example of how everything's gone completely fucking tits up today. People have got so lazy and entitled and also, I think, lack the spine to do what's necessary to discipline the kids that they'd rather just use pills to fucking do it. Like, there was no such thing as ADHD and fucking autism when I was a kid. When I was a kid, we used to call it little bastard syndrome. And how you cured little bastard syndrome was by thrashing them with a flip flop. <laughs> Very simple. If they get you on the old Persian rugs at the age of four, it does something to your brain, and you end up hosing a fucking ice cream van with a meat with an AK forty seven. Like that's just that's just a fact, isn't it? So I looked that up. NRA said that Ritalin's linked to school shootings. Obviously, the CNN want to argue the toss. and But the thing is, when you read the article, even though they argue the toss, they are still all on drugs. Like they say, among those was the massacre at Majorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. The shooter, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, had a history of ADHD. His psychiatric records obtained by CNN showed that in 2016 he was on two types of medication that are routinely prescribed for ADHD, but neither was written in. Like, they want to argue the fucking toss, but really they just want to be pedantic, don't they? Because they must know the crack. They just want to argue, oh, well, technically, uh, actually, fuck off. Right? You're getting your kids ripped to the tits, and it's fucking their brains up. <laughs> Here's the short version. You can't go a week without some barmy bastard fucking wielding a high-powered rifle at a fucking ice cream van. It's, it's the maddest thing ever, and it never used to happen when I was a lad. Said the drugs reduce impulsive behaviour and hyperactivity. Well, we've all fucking been there. Everyone has a mate in school who was a bit of a nutter. One of my best mates, I was best man at his wedding, my good pal Snell. He was a fucking lunatic. He was well into general criminality when we were 13 but he grew out of it didn't need any drugs didn't go to jail and by the time he was 19 he was paying his taxes like everybody else and yes just like me he is now a boring married bastard pays his mortgage looks after his kids fucking boring cunt no need to melt his brain with adderall or vitamin of ritalin or any of this fucking shit and even this real unrelated and even this article says Unnecessary and accidental use of it increases over 60%. 60% and that's what we know about. Like I'd argue almost all of it's fucking unnecessary. We've always had schools and we've always had little bastards in schools. We haven't always had school shootings. We had fucking pistols and firearms in the 40s and 50s and 60s. You didn't see kids. Probably even earlier, although I, I'm, I'm assuming you wouldn't be able to kill quite as many people with a fucking flintlock pistol. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't get kids in the 18th century taking the blunderbuss to school. You know, I can imagine it, teacher at the front, suddenly, what the devil, child wielding a blunderbuss, blasting people in the face because they're tired of sweeping chimneys. It didn't happen. It's this fucking shit. Nutty drugs that make you turn into your turns you into a complete barking mad howling fucking maniac having long conversations with your feet and stabbing women in the face that these people are fucking off the tits because we're giving them drugs because we don't want to do the hard work so that's what this fucking video is going to be about parenting i'm not going to go any more into the details behind drug use and ritalin or arguing the toss about what pills we should be giving them and what pills we shouldn't be giving them let's just Let's let more serious political commentators than me.
tackle those subjects because I don't care about the numbers. I know what I know from reading regularly. And I know that giving large quantities of mind-bending drugs to little children whose neural pathways are still not fully formed is a terrible fucking idea. Again, you don't need to be a PhD to know this shit. You just have to have lived your life and grew up in a time where all the kids weren't ripped to the fucking tits and all the kids didn't want to stab the pretty girl in the eye because she wouldn't suck his balls after he agreed with her on absolutely everything. Because that's what they do nowadays, kids, isn't it? They've got no fucking game. They get taught that if you be a whiny loser and prostrate yourself entirely in front of the girls and just let them walk all over you and be a fucking dickless nerd, that eventually they'll shag you. And uh, that's not how it works, lads. That's not how it works. They like confidence. They like bants. They like humour. They don't like whiny fucking ragamuffins who agree with everything they say all the time. They sort of do when you marry the fuckers. But by then it's all part of the fun. Because you need nagging at. Because when you're 35 and you want to drink whiskey seven days a week, uh, you shit through the eye of a needle, turn yellow, and it's generally not very good for your health. So it's good to get nagged at when you're in your late 30s and your 40s. Fine. I'll embrace the whinge since I hit 40. But when you're young, you want to enjoy yourself and have a crack and, and, and live your life. 18 to 30, enjoy your fucking self. Don't turn into a 45-year-old henpecked fucking loser when you're 22. Fuck me. Anyway, here's a great story off the Daily Mash I loved. I act, I'll actually show it because I think it's relevant to my argument about old-school parenting. <laughs> this one says, your dad could still have you in a fight. Modern men have been warned that their fathers could easily kick the shit out of them. <laughs> Researchers at the Institute for Studies found that the softening effects of desk jobs, media-induced vanity and fancy holidays has left men physically inferior to their ageing fathers. Teacher Tom Logan said, I mocked my 64-year-old father for wearing some chinos he ordered from a newspaper advert. <laughs> <laughs> Within a split second, I found myself in a vice-like headlock. I tried to wriggle out, but it was like being caught in the branches of a wrinkly tree. 40-year-old plumber Roy Hobbs said, I borrowed my dad's strimmer without asking. When he demanded it back, I denied all knowledge, so he kicked my ass. I tried crawling into the kitchen, but he grabbed my leg and dragged me, and dragged me back. I thought I was going to die. It's mad because he wears shoes done up with Velcro. Hobbs' father, Eric, said, I don't want to hurt younger men. I just want to do gardening and watch documentaries about steam engines, but if they fuck with me, I will destroy them. <laughs> See, my dad got a massive kick out of that story. I sent him it. Uh, he can barely work a phone, but he, he, na he navigated to it in the end, and he loved that. Um, but this is this is the thing. In 30 years' time, that will no longer be true, will it? Your dad wouldn't be able to have you in a fight, because your dad will be a fucking reed-thin, emasculated soy boy who couldn't knock the skin off a fucking rice pudding. We need proper parents, boys and girls. That's what we need. Get rid of the fucking drugs, amusing as the memes are, and be willing to discipline your bastard children. It turns them into fucking lost souls. I also think it's linked to the autism numbers, because if you've actually sat and checked the autism numbers, if you're a bit autistic yourself, you're a boring bastard and you look these things up. Maybe, I, maybe I'm off it, but I didn't have any drugs, unfortunately. Well, other than cannabis, LSD, um, magic mushrooms, massive quantities of alcohol. The good ones. The good ones. Nobody's ever shot up an ice cream van when, um, when they've been on ganja. Right? And the only way ganja can kill you is if you get it over the fucking head with a 20-ounce brick of it. So let, let, we should cut them some slack with ganja. But um, autism rates are flew up. And I don't believe that it's 100% down to a diagnosis being better. Because you know what stood out in this story to me? It said the CDC estimated that 1 in 68 children in the US have autism. The prevalence is 1 in 42 for boys and 1 in 189 for girls. So that's five lads for each girl, and guess what that correlates with? Now I know fucking nerds out there, actually, they're going to come out and say, oh, yeah, correlation is not causation. I know that, nerds. But listen, we do know that way more boys get prescribed fucking mind-bending drugs than girls do, so surely that's a link as well. It hollows you out. It's not fucking natural to give kids drugs. What is natural for kids is to give them the slipper. The Scottish government were behind all of this shit in England because, as usual, the communist Scottish government love overbearing authoritarianism. Remember that? Of course they fucking were. Of course they were. Anything that we know is eventually good for your health, they fucking ban it. They ban smacking, even we know that's good for you. And then they, they, they invent battered Mars bars and fucking... 
deep fried sheep stomachs. It's 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 arse backwards in Scotland. If they know it fucks you, they want you to do as much of it as possible. If they know it's essential for your long term health, fucking ban the cunt. This is what we're up against. We know drugs fuck you. We know discipline helps you in the long term. And the fucking jocks banned it first and foremost. There's no such thing as a loving smack. Fuck off, hippie. What does this hippie know about anything? There is. I suppose I'll finish on that. Because that's what well, that was the point I was going to make in the first place, right? There is such a thing as a loving smack, you stupid lefty twat. My dad didn't want to slap me when I fucked up. My dad didn't want to lash my ass with his belt till I couldn't stand sit down for a week. But he did it. You know why? Because in the old days, parents had intestinal fortitude. These fuckers, intestinal fortitude. They would make themselves do things that made them uncomfortable. It is the most human thing in the world for a parent to love their child. That's why Chris Rocks jokes about it, doesn't he, saying, why do we give people credit for things they should be doing anyway? When you get them saying, oh yeah, I feed my kids. And he's like, yeah, they're your kids. It's your job to fucking feed them. You don't get credit for doing the bare minimum. You absolute shitbag. So don't tell me about how much you love your kids. Everyone loves the kids. You don't get special credit for doing the obvious. You might as well be bragging about breathing. What you have to do is force yourself to discipline your children. Make yourself do it. It makes you uncomfortable to see your child cry in pain. It makes you uncomfortable to tell them, no, you little fat butterball, you're not getting your third packet of skills. Fuck off. It makes you uncomfortable because they cry and you love them. And when they cry, you go, oh, fucking hell. And then you bend like a wet, rich tea finger. Give them everything they want because it makes you feel better because you're a fucking loser and you're a weakling. Get a grip. Do what needs to be done. My dad didn't want to hit me. My mum didn't want to hit me. They made themselves do it because they know in the long run, discipline helps you. It's linked to it. It's fucking, it's a known fact. It's not just wild conjecture from me. Again, you'll get some hippies in the comments whinging. Ah, oh, Bootnik knows nothing. He's just an angry man. Fuck off. Everything I say I can prove with science. I just frequently can't be asked because I assume my viewership also knows the score. Delayed gratification is the key to success. This is what we know. This is why parents have to discipline the kids and be strict and say, no, if you want X, you have to do Y, etc. It's all linked. It's linked to being a parent, to making yourself do uncomfortable things, to steal yourself when your fucking heartstrings tweak because your son's crying because he wants the candy and you know he has to do his own work first. You don't fold and give him the candy. You say, listen, you little bastard. Do your fucking homework because you're doing them a favour. And again, we've known this for a thousand years. We don't need scientists to tell us. My granny used to talk about killing them with kindness. Do you remember that little fat Geordie kid? He's a good one from Manchester. Manchester mum fed takeaways to dying obese child. Yeah, you know what that is? That's killing them with kindness. Killing them with kindness. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about not disciplining them, giving them drugs because it's easier than fucking doing your job, or refusing to spank them and giving them fucking pizzas instead. You're killing them with kindness. You're not doing them a favour. So get them off the drugs, get them off the fucking donuts, and get the little bastards off the couch. Steal yourself, do your job, and be a fucking parent. That's the message from today, boys and girls. Oh yeah, and Scotland's completely full of absolute maniacs, communists, Marxists, and, um, ironically enough, morbidly obese women that always seem to be walking around with skinny fucking chavs. I don't get it. I read it in the Viz once. It said, if, uh, if it's true that fat-bottomed girls make the world go around, fucking the city of Glasgow should be heralded as the saviour of humanity. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, that's that. I just want to do a bit of a rant today. Um, I'm sick of reading about these fucking idiots drugging the kids up because they can't fucking handle life. Sort your fucking lives out, folks. It shouldn't be my job to teach the basics. But alas, here we are. You've got fucking commandos telling graduates how to fucking raise the children. I never thought I'd see the day. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys for my lengthy news roundup on Sunday. Um, and I'm going to try and get a podcast done with someone. Um, my mate Al, the, uh, the whiskey king. I think I'm going to have a chat with him if I can get away on Saturday. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the eight-hour time difference, that might involve me being completely shit-faced at 11 o'clock in the morning. Not the first time, um, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.